thank you for allowing me to do this talk. It's on the developmental analysis of Einstein's relativity. And I'm Roger Anderton. The aim is to understand how Einstein's relativity developed. And that reveals several strands as to how Einstein's relativity has been misunderstood. Uh, the first point is there's no references in his papers. And the second point is about Galilean relativity versus special relativity. And third point uh, is that his uh, paper has been mistranslated into English. And the fourth point is his wife uh, might have been a major contributor to the theory. And fifth point will be about argument over Einstein's understanding of time. So we go through all these things. Right. Einstein's paper on special relativity was in 1905 and it's called On the Electrodynamics of Moving Bodies and it has no references or citations of what Einstein's working from. So it can give the impression that it springs from Einstein's imagination through his thought experiments. So this person is Max Born. He's one of the friends of Einstein. And he tells us that about Einstein's paper, that it gives you the impression of quite a new venture, but that is, of course, as I've tried to explain, not true. And he said this in 1956. And he's basically admitting Einstein was working from an earlier tradition of relativity. So this is the maths on the left hand side, well my left hand side, so I'm looking at it, is the Galilean transformations and on the right hand side is the Lorentz transformations and it's getting presented as Galilean relativity versus special relativity. But that's false. Uh, Galileo Galilei proposed the principle of relativity, but he did not propose the Galilean transformation. And that is from a paper in 2010-20 by K.M. Brown. And he says, Galileo Galilei was the first scientist to hypothesize a universal principle of relativity but he neither proposed nor limited his principle to the so-called Galilean transformation. Galilean relativity and special relativity is, does not really represent the development of relativity, particularly from the development from Newtonian physics. Relativity has been falsely presented. According to Brown, the so-called Galilean transformation might be better named the Euclidean space-time transformation since it is shown here that universal uh, Euclidean space actually requires time to be universal and that is uh, t primed is equal to t. So in both uh, reference frames they would be using the same time. It is not usually realized that the Euclidean transformation assumes light speed to be infinite. Thought is gone into this into combining the Galilean principle of relativity, the Euclidean transformation and New Newton's mechanics as ordinary should be called ordinary relativity to distinguish it from special relativity. And that would help you to understand um, the model and precursor to special relativity. Finally, it suggested that the current use of the term relativistic is incorrect when applied exclusively to special relativity, for it implies classical mechanics is non relativistic If we go back to Einstein, we find that he was in a study group of his friends, which he called themselves the Olympia Academy. And their reading list dealt with lots of things, including Boscovich's theory. Uh, Boscovich, in 
particularly important to me because I've stumbled across him a long time ago and found that he was a progression of Newtonian physics. So these are Einstein's friends whom he used to talk physics with and read physics books and so forth. So I'm referring, want to refer to a professor of chemistry, Dragoslav Stokovic, talk on Voskovic's theory, which is at on the internet at that address, where he goes into an explanation that from Boscovich's theory, uh, modern quantum theory was developed. And this is uh, the idea of Boscovich. He had this idea of these this foot curves, uh, where all you have a hierarchy of matter, and they're all connected by obeying forces obeying this sort of curve and from this you can build up the electron atomic nucleus uh, atoms and how molecules and so forth work and down the bottom there there's the book by uh, Dragoslav on Roger Boscovich so Boscovich was in the 18th century and he sort of took up what Newton was talking about in earlier. Uh, from Newton it was a corpuscular theory of light, i.e. light particle theory, and from that Boscovich made this development. I contend that it's not just in the photoelectric uh, 1905 paper from Einstein, that he was dealing with light as a particle, but he was also dealing with light as a particle in his relativity paper. Uh, so this link has not properly been appreciated. Einstein came up with things like this thought experiment. He wondered what would happen if you travelled on a beam of light. What would you say? You saw sort of like look into a mirror and would you see your reflection from a mirror and things like that. But if you go back, you find this thing called a Philon Pe Pearson demon. And this was published before Einstein uh, published his 1905 paper on special relativity. And this Philon Pearson demon, they were also wondering about traveling at the speed of light. So you had a sort of precursor to Einstein's thoughts on travelling at the speed of light by other people. So Galileo talked to relativity and between him and Einstein, there were others who dealt with the relativity issue, but they most, mostly get ignored, overshadowed by Einstein. And the most important of that was the 18th century polymath uh, Boscovich. So I have now gone back to the original German when Einstein first talked to special relativity in 1905 and found it was mistranslated into English. I thought I had made a big discovery, but I found out subsequently that I'm not unique in finding that it was mistranslated. There was an Arthur Miller who recognized it was mistranslated in 1981 and he put it to this book here as shown this shown book he wrote about R, Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity emergence in 1905 and early interpretation and he noted that Einstein's paper had been mistranslated into English now I think it hasn't got out to a wider audience that the standard text for reading Einstein is a mistranslation. So people, there's so much, there's so, lots of mash of literature on relativity that lots of things get overlooked. And it's getting overlooked that Einstein has been mistranslated into English. So I've wondered about such issues as why didn't Einstein become more aware that his 
theory had been mistranslated into English. And I think the reason is possibly that his wife was a major contributor to the theory. Uh, she, she would have been more, probably be more concerned about the mistranslation and it might not have been in agreement with what she was thinking about relativity. Whereas for Einstein, for his understanding of relativity, the mistranslation did not seem to make much difference. So there's this Professor Gannon, he's, she's done a talk at this uh, address shown where she's talked about Einstein's first wife, Milena Maverick Marek Einstein. And Milena was studying physics with Einstein. Uh, she had a higher school in math, math than him, leading people to saying she was a better mathematician than Einstein. She had a higher overall score in the degree course that she was doing with Einstein, but she failed what Einstein passed. And it's not really known why she failed and Einstein passed if, if she had a better school. And presumably it's a borderline. They were both borderline probably on the physics course and they were more lenient with Einstein and uh, not so lenient with her. So some people say Einstein is bad at maths, others deny that. But going with the idea that the maths was mainly done by his wife uh, leads to the possibility that the maths has been misrepresented by him. Uh, Marek being written out of her contribution, she was not then able to give her clarification. So this uh, person, uh, William Bray, who's uh, into theoretical physics and retired from the US Department of Defense, also seems to be the same opinion that Einstein's first wife was a major contributor to Einstein's papers. And he's come up with this strange bit of mathematics, uh, which he calls the einstein Marek operator. And it seems to be when you read the paper of Einstein, most people say oh, it's, it's, there are maths mistakes in it. But his analysis, he thinks that Marek came up with some strange mathematics. I've looked into it and I'm, I'm not too happy with his interpretation of that. Anyway, Bray says in the einstein marek derivation, I showed this, the operator, which is called the einstein marek operator. Uh, it's taken from the original document. This is one of two critical components to the original derivation as per the 1905 document. And historically has zero citations to and the century of consequent paradoxes. This is determined to a real fundamental law of nature and not an artifact of observation as per historical documents of the michelson morley interferometer images and so forth. I haven't fully looked into it, as I've just said, I think, and I think it's probably not right to go with that. I prefer to go with the idea, which some of the other people have gone with, that there are math mistakes in Einstein's paper. I think one of the issues is, was Einstein and his wife really um, familiar with complex numbers? So the points are Einstein's first wife uh, contributed to his work and after his divorce it was no, no longer joint work so he was left to interpret it without any input from her when really it needed her to clarify the maths. It was from him interpreting it that he gave his version of time, which I'm going to point out was disagreed with by the leading philosopher of science. And so I think the mistranslation of Einstein's paper into English has helped to distort the issue about time. What Einstein did was to say weird things, such as this quote, for us believing physicists, the distinction between past, present and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. 
and he clashed with the, philosoph the leading philosopher of his day, Henry Bergson, who disagreed with Einstein, what Einstein was saying about time. So this is uh, Henry Bergson. He was a famous and influential French philosopher in the late 19th and early 20th century. And when he clashed with Einstein, that seemed to uh, cause an effect of making him lose his fame. He's mainly forgotten about nowadays. This is a talk by the Canals, who's dealt with the clash between Einstein and Bergson in her book, The Physicist and the Philosopher. So the points I want to raise is Bergson disagreed with Einstein about time. And on the mistranslation bit, there are many mistakes in translation of Einstein's paper on relativity. The usual translation is by Perrett and Jeffrey. One mistranslation problem uh, spotted back in 1963 was for this passage. It's noted that the word highlighted here cannot is false. That is a mistranslation. And here it is emphasizing that it shouldn't have been the word cannot, it should have been the word now. And that part of the thing was referring to some mathematics in the paper. And the mathematics it's referring to is this quote here about how to synchronize two clocks. And when the forced translation with the cannot is being used, it's implying to you that you have to use that equation and you cannot use any other equation. But when the word cannot is not used, it means you are then flexible to do things different ways other than that equation. So time does not have to be dealt with in the way that Einstein proposes in his 1905 paper based on the correct translation. It's the false translation that is imposing on, on us that he wants us to deal with time only in one way. But the correct translation is not imposing that constraint on us. And Einstein, when you look into what the things he said in public, he seems to be going with the mistranslation. He seems to be trying to impose his understanding of time which you would get from the mistranslation of his paper. But a correct translation of his paper doesn't have it in there. So and I, I think his wife was probably not agreeing with Einstein with the, what Einstein was subsequently said about time, just based on this little bit. So it all adds up to the mistranslation of Einstein's 1905 paper on relativity, his wife being joint work, worker on the paper and her insights ignored, the argument between Bergson and Einstein over Einstein's view about time, uh, giving us a rejection of how Einstein is dealing with time, there is no need to, de to deal with time his way, and continuing with the old way of dealing with time pre-Einstein. As we move from special relativity to general relativity, the problems just mount out even more. John, this is a picture of John Wheeler, and he took up teaching uh, physics, physicists about relativity. Most relativists come via general relativity, uh, we have in the root have uh, what John Wheeler set up. Now I've got Dr. C.Y. Low who says the Wheeler School of Relativity has got it wrong and this is one of the papers he's written. Dr. Low says 
general relativity is not consistent. Pauli has misinterpreted Einstein's 1916 equivalence principle uh, that can derive a valid field equation. The Wheeler School has distorted Einstein's 1916 principle to be his 1911 assumption of equivalence and created new errors. Moreover, errors on dynamic solutions have allowed the implicit assumption of a unique coupling sign that violates the principle of causality. And Dr. Lowe is citing what Einstein thinks and which, which Dr. Lowe agrees with Einstein about. Now this is another example of the problem of general relativity. This is a picture of Peter Bergman. In 1942, Bergman published the first textbook on general relativity called Introduction to the Theory of Relativity with a foreword by Einstein. Now, I'm quoting Wikipedia, which seems to have it right about this. Peter Bergman did not agree with Einstein, but left the dispute out of his earlier book in 1942 to get Einstein's endorsement. So Peter Bergman disagreed with Einstein about general relativity. However, after Einstein died, Bergman wrote a new book in 1968 claiming that vector velocity vector like velocity would could change direction but not speed so while Einstein was alive Peter Bergman decided to agree with uh, Einstein about general relativity and when Einstein died he decided to give his own version of general relativity it's, that is an example of the type of visions that go on and I think this was picked up by the uh, John Wheeler School. They went by Peter Bergman's revision on this part of relativity. So going to my conclusions, um, put, putting aside those who read Einstein accept it, it is possible to follow this line of thinking. One, reading Einstein's relativity in its English translation, it is possible for some people done to decide it's wrong. These people are usually the distance and are ignored by the mainstream. So there's a lot of people saying Einstein wrong, but they're sort of like the mainstream doesn't bother with them to pay much attention to them. Two, it is then possible to look at the original German and decide it was translated it was not translated properly into English and to think it makes more sense when properly translated and when the math is sorted out. Three, but Einstein seems to be saying things in public more in line with the mistranslated papers. This leads one to think that the original uh, papers had a major input from somebody other than Einstein and the natural candidate is his wife. Uh, who's not been allowed to give her a side of what she thought. Einstein's relativity is built on a mountain of mistakes. When claims are made that Einstein's relativity has been tested and found to work, those claims do not address the mess on which relativity has been built. No definitive, clear statement of Einstein's relativity has been presented as to how it was developed from existing physics. And I pointed out the Galil where they normally teach uh, Einstein's relativity is they point out there was Galilean relativity and then there was special relativity. And the Galilean transformations are not Galilean relativity. That is just a misrepresentation. They've misrepresented re misrepresented things all the way through. So thank you for listening and finish.